And so, like, how how one on one did you work with these guys? Did you work with all of them? Did you? Yeah, like you know, one on one. You know, the regular thing. Like, I want to see how you do a character, and you, and you give them the character, and you see how they do it, and um, and and that's and that's how I meet most of them. You know, um, Igor, the one who did Blowtorch. The first artist that on the Blowtorch is a guy named Montos. He's right now. He right now he's doing Green Lantern. You gotta pick up a Green Lantern. Uh, John Stewart, Green Lantern. Oh, good for him. And um, when he did, he sent first sent in the the artwork grayscale for um Blowtorch. It was too good to color. Oh yeah. I was like, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And I'm like, I, I, I'm I can't color this. I, I I like the way it looks right now. So I, I did the comic book in, in grayscale, and the feedback was everybody loved it more than the color book. People were like I like this better than pinpoint or chess because I like the way it looks. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, that was right. our assessment too. Yeah, I was like, when he got uh, he did issues one and two of, of, of Low Torch before he got picked up, and then uh, J.C. Grande did issue three of Low Torch, and uh, even though he does a a great style himself is just different from the first two issues. So he had, you know, and I'm like, well, oh, I want, I like the way he does his, but I want kind of the book that, the look that Montos did it. So then I went searching, I found Igor. And I did Igor a test page. And, you know, and you look at, he had, Igor has such a strong storytelling. Yes. Yes, for absolutely. The script, for the script. And then when I let him read the script, he was like, "Yo, I love this because it has the de- he has details that he could take advantage of." And I was like, "Let's do it." And uh, when he sent him his pages, he's able to still bring in that same magic with the grayscales, which I was looking for. Yeah, he did a fantastic awesome. job, man. Yeah, he really did. Oh my god, I, 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 as yeah. well, I was like raving about his visual storytelling. Yeah, I was like, "Dude, I, I uh, want to yeah. talk to this guy too." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he, does, he does fantastic work. It's the- Storytelling, um, when he breaks down the pages and the panels, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And um, yeah. when he sent to the pages for issue two, I was just as blown away. I was like, yo, this is this is great. So he knows how to capture the emotion. Like, you know, some artists you got to tell, you got to tell things like, you know, don't don't draw every panel of the guy's face with a still face. Right. Every panel can be. When the guy's talking, you got to show some teeth, you got to show some movement and expression. And, um, yeah, he caught that right away. He just had he just had a great feature. You know, you look at you look at um issue one that he did with the guy, the clerk. And you could feel like yeah. Low Touch and Clerk is really talking to each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the expression. It's like, you know, they really Absolutely. talking to each other. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even even with the mask on, you know, you could put he puts the hood this way, he puts the yeah, hood in yeah. movement. So, you know, I was like, he, he knows how to he really made yeah. it when you read the no, comic and- book. It's not like you're not reading the comic book. You know what I mean, so right, right, and and I told Bob, and especially I'm glad you brought up that scene specifically because especially in scenes like that, which I call them stagnant scenes, you know, there's not a lot of movement going on. It's it's just you know a conversation. You know, even then, Igor did a phenomenal job creating this movement on the page with the way the panels yeah. flow. Yeah. I mean, it's fantastic. Every Every panel got movement in, in, in issue one. Igor drew, I mean, this, every panel got an atmosphere. Let me, let me put it like that. Not, maybe not movement, but atmosphere. There's not a panel <laughs> in that kind of, but it has some kind of atmosphere. But when he's in the car, when he's talking on the phone, he's talking to Rowan, and Rowan's flipping airborne around, and, and, and you know, he's making the joke. Uh, Rose, uh, I, forgot what, I forgot what it was. Uh, kissing in the tree or something like that. And she's like, you say one more oh, word, yeah, I'll break yeah. your leg. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, we say all the time that if you can remove all the dialogue. You know, she, he's, oh, I'm sorry. She, uh, about the relationship. Uh, you're cutting out, uh, yeah. Alfred. You cut out there for a minute. Go ahead. Uh, you were talking about the relationship. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, you, you catch a glimpse of the relationship between him, Rowan and, and Blowtorch and Airborne, and he's, making a, and he's teasing them. Every, oh, yeah, you yeah. still could see the, the atmosphere every panel 
that's going on throughout the book. Like, there's not a panel there that he didn't create an atmosphere in, and that, that's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, it really is. I'll go, it really I'll is. Go, I'll go ahead, Christian. Yeah, but like, like you know, because I, I, I do the art as well, and, and it's just like I would love to pick Igor's brain about his process. Um, but what were you going to say, Bob? Because I was actually going to ask, you know, uh, ask the next question, but go ahead. What were you going to say, Bob? I was going to say that um, Christian and I always say that uh, if you can remove all the dialogue from a comic and still follow the story just by looking at the panels through the pages, then I'm telling you, and that's what you can do. You you can follow like uh, the dialogue that you guys have in there is, is awesome, the character building, but you take all that out and Igor did such a good job, man, that you just can just go from panel to panel and you really don't need dialogue. He did such a fab uh, fabulous job, man. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I think that that's the magic. If you got parts in the comic book that really that you you love, like you know, pinpoint. When I was writing him, I, I love the Lost Boys. I love the part that he's walking in the boys in the little. You're right, pinpoint first one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and the little kid come up behind him and say, "Hey, man, give me your bag, man. Hey, give me I your bag." It. And he turned around like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, I like I like creating those moments in the, in the storyline that you no, know, you read it and and. I could imagine you reading the comic book and your face is frowning like, oh, this, this, this is funny. Oh, no, no. Just kicking the kids dude. around. And grabbing, I know. You know That's you know. what, dude, as soon as you said that, I just got this vision of him doing that back kick and all, like, four of the oh, kids. Oh, yeah, he going. Chuck Norris oh. roundhouse kicks, like, oh, three Norris. of them. <laughs> Chuck it's Norris brutal, grabbing them. Dude, it's brutal. You, know, you have to think, what would your reaction be if you walk in, and, you know, these, you know, uh, that happened to a friend of mine. That's, that's, that's how that part came up in the comic book. And he went to the he went to the store, and he got robbed by little kids. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I was I was thinking about that part when I was writing in that part in pinpoint. He's walking. He's like, "Hey, man, have you took bag?" And you know, these kids are turn around. And he's gang of kids are robbing them. He's, you know, and his back kicked yeah. them and grab them. So just about all your stuff is built off of a uh, personal experience or your friends or something. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it goes into the you know a lot of it goes into what what. You know what the news is. You know, um, when when Chet first came out, it was more it was more image structured with with a bad guy and a good guy, like a team. You know, like like the build up between them, like a, a Magneto and a, and an X Men. So you had wow. to have one major villain for the team to go through. And then uh, I did the first story off with that. I was like, well, I, I like them better as freelance personal agendas. So you could take up anything in the news. You know, things come up in the news all the time. And then, you know, if I write them that way, then they they could reflect on anything that's going on. And that and that's how I started personal agendas. Yeah, that's nice. I like Very that. Cool. So I, I think then now would be a good time because now that we're talking about this, is uh, I'm you know, Bob and I we're both writers. We love writing. It's it's a craft we're in love with. And clearly you love writing too. So we wanted to ask you to kind of, you know, tell us about your process, you know, like how do you approach a story and, and how do you get into the groove of, of actually executing? Um, something has to hit me. So the influence, the influence had to hit me of the, uh, uh, something like, you know, uh, something that hit me. I'm like, Oh, you know something that could be a story. Yeah. You know, so, uh, Just, that's inspiration. You see something or hear something. Is. Yeah. Inspiration. Sometimes a video game, you know, um, like you know, you watching like uh, Ghost in the Shell or something like that. You're like, hey, I want to do something like that, you know. So as soon as soon that one, as soon as the idea clicks, the whole story is in your head. Now the yeah, process it's is getting out right your head itself after that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, the, the process is getting out your head is the problem because I, I'm yeah, a slow writer. Yeah, and that's why I have that's why I work like somebody like Alex who's who's fast. So I will plot, instead of writing the script out, I will plot the whole thing. I will, I will mm. plot my, my beginning, middle, and end, what I want to happen, and express that to him, and send that to him. He'll send me back a, a page that, a page breakdown, and then we and then we do the script together. Right. But it's easier doing it with somebody because, you know, I don't like typing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay. I type, I'm not right. a fast typer. So when when I when I first started um, comic books, I had a girlfriend that could type like I don't know, you know one of those people that could type like two hundred words a minute. Holy wow! So I never wow. used to write my script; I used to say my script, and she typed it. 
So I would say page one, blah, 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 blah. And I would sit there in the living room and I would go through a whole comic book. And I could and, and, and she would type it as fast as I could say it. Wow. Dude, that's badass, man. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah when 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 uh when we separated, those those scripts came a lot slower. <laughs> Cause I, I wasn't good. I wasn't good at keeping up with my ideas and writing at the same time. So Right. I mean, do you have a, you know, like, because I know, like, me, for example, I kind of have, like, a bit of a ritual to get me into the mood of writing, you know, into the mindset. What, how do, what does your ritual look like? As soon as it hits me, write it. As soon as the yeah, idea right. hits me, write it. That's the idea I want. Uh, write it and then um, pace it as I write in it. But I know the idea I want. So it's how do I get to that? You know what I mean? Right. Like you know, right. if I'm watching, if I'm watching uh, Mission Impossible, and I like the fact that Tom Cruise is hung up to the side of the plane. Like, hey, I like that. Start writing, you know, you know, pinpointing, and then how do I get them to get to the plane to 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 ride on the side of it? You know right. what I mean, what, what's the adversary? What, what's the, what's the story? Uh, why he's there? And then uh, that's usually how I start start writing it. And then I get, mm. I get, like, say, I, I, of the first thought, I get to, like, say, page seven. And then I take that page seven, and, and then uh, I, I talk to Alex, or I show it to Alex, and he'll, okay, let's, let's do this. You got page seven, should be page eight. And then help help me pay, uh, page structure the story, so I'm not jumping it all in one thing. Right, right, right. Very yeah, cool. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, just all, it's just all something that hits you, like whether you're watching the news. Unfortunately, you know, you're watching news and, and, and there's something going on that's so crazy. Like, you know, what would you do? What would the what would you want the government to do in that in that situation? You know, like especially like um the behead when I was you know just before it's the beheadings. You know what I mean? You know, the yeah. beheadings is a big on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what would you, what would you, what would you want? A government to do or somebody to do it so that, you know and, and then you start writing like you know what you think should happen or whatever and that's how scripts come about you no know, mm-hmm. like the threats out there are real you know, like it's real threats out there you know what i mean so yeah yeah that's right. right no writing from life i mean you can never go wrong with that so uh i i mean i really i only have one other question for you so i mean you know whatever else you can come up with bob you you interject um, so basically what, uh, you know, normally videos like this will be watched by pe- pe- people who are not only comic book readers, but also aspiring comic book artists or aspiring comic book writers. So, you know, you, you've been doing this, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, since, uh, 1997, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. About there. I mean, a, little okay. bit, a little bit earlier, but yeah. So. You know, I mean, that that's a long time. That's a lot of experience, and I'm sure a lot of know-how that goes with it. So what kind of advice do you have for these aspiring writers and artists of comic books? Enjoy what you're writing. If you're enjoying what you're writing, then then no matter what the outcome is, you enjoy it, and people, and people will feel it through how you're trying to write it. Yeah, they'll see how much you enjoy people, it by you writing it, yeah. Yeah, if, you, if people feel it, if you could write, you know, whatever you decide to write, whatever genre it is, zombies or, you know, cats on Mars or whatever, if, if you could put into a <coughs> script how you would feel about the character, then when, when people read the script and they could feel that way about the same character, then you, you're achieving the right thing. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, Very nice. so if, you, if, if you read Pinpoint, you're like, I like, I like him because he's aggressive, or you read Touch. I like him because he's calm, he's, he's calculating. Or you, you read Rowan, or you read Hart, or you read any of the individuals, and you're like, I like this character because I can relate to them in this way. That's what I'm trying to put out. I'm trying to write them in a way that you can relate to that characteristic that they have. Right, right. Okay. And then, uh, like, as far as, uh, you know, like, what... Once they get into the industry, what what advice would you have for them then? You know, like what can they expect? How can they excel Just in the put, industry? Put it together as professionally professionally as possible. You know, um, what what what? How do you want it to look? You know, um, so you know, if you look on something updated, 
whatever how you the the in, the example that you're looking at, try and match that example. Now, I'm an image head, so of course my examples are going to look like Cyberforce or or something like that, or you know, right. a Wildcat, or push clear my X Men blue team, gold team, something like that. Right. That's why I that's see that. I use. Yeah. That's my that's my influence. I would tell you, whatever your influence is, match your influence. Right. And then people that you, yeah, people that's into the same thing that you was into at the time that you're writing it, they will enjoy like they enjoy the same thing you enjoy. So if somebody enjoy Wildcats, they enjoy Cyberforce, I would say you enjoy chess. You know. So if you're writing zombies or something like that, say if walking there to your example. And use that example. Make sure that what you're writing at least looks or feels in that same atmosphere. So you could say, hey, you like Walking Dead, you'll like this. If you like, you know, Bastard Galactica, you'll like this. If you like Star Wars, you'll like this. Make make your idea try and match what you, you know, what's got you into it. Yeah, so it fits a certain uh, genre or fit, fits the feel. Or fits yeah. something that people can relate to. Right, right. Fits on it, something like related to. <clears throat> you know, zombies, zombies is still big, but zombies became like a the overflow of what comic books was for a minute. So if you like you right, write like yeah. a zombie book, you know how you, what, what you gonna write different in your zombie book that's different from that zombie book. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. Walking Dead is a right. zombie book. <laughs> All right. You, know, yeah, you got everybody's... kids. You got cats. <clears throat> yeah. You got zombie bears, you got zombie sharks, you got zombie, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I mean, it, it almost, it, it almost seems like, like, like The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead became very successful because it was different from Resident Evil. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, and, you mean. and everything became zombies. You got zombie piranha fish, you know what I mean? So, you know, don't go, don't go to Lake, Lake Jersey because the zombie they were each other zombies, but now it's a scary tale. So, what's your anyway? You know, but yeah, what's your opinion on uh, floppies versus trades and graphics and digital? Uh, I need physical for me to enjoy. I'm I'm, I'm a I'm a sit down. I'm a, I'm a rereader. So yeah. I like I read a comic book over and over. You know, I it, I tried doing, doing I I put some comic books digital, especially when it first came out. I, I forgot the website it first came out on. But it's one of the first websites that started doing digital comic books. Now you you could upload your, your comic books too. And I'm like, you know, people be like reading it on the phone or on early computers and tablets. Some people love it. Don't get me wrong. Some people would prefer that, but it's not the same as having it in your hand. Yeah. I'm a reread. Uh, I, I read a comic book over and over and over and over. Yeah. No, so. so you're a true comic book reader, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, I, I like looking at it. I like. Well, I, and I like to study it too. Like you know, I study. Pan, yeah. You know, uh, pacing. Right. You know what I mean? I I I, I read like Mutant Genesis and like I love the way Cyclops jumped up. I want to do that pacing. You know what I mean? I love the way yeah. Wolverine jumped up the van. I do that pacing. You know, I, I study how I want the pacing to go. So you can't really do that as, as well as uh, as uh, on a digital. I do buy trades. I like trades because um, you get the whole story. It's like Ben watching a TV show. You get the whole thing at once. Right. So, you know, um, as long as whether it's trade or whatever, I, as long as it's in the physical format, I like it. You know, we covered everything I wanted to know. Like, you know, I was really interested in, like, your you know, your background you know, how you get into writing the story and what inspired these characters. I mean, you covered all that great. So, I mean, yeah. is there anything else you want to share with us uh, that maybe we haven't covered, Alfred? Um, Just let's see you going to really enjoy what's coming up next. I mean, um, if, if you already got a relationship with Pinpoint and Blowtorch and some of the members on the chess mm -hmm. team, uh, next year we got uh, the Footpath solo combo that's coming out that uh, I know you heard of a writer called Jonathan Hendrick. Uh-huh. But, um, no, no, no. He, he did. He did a comic book called Recount. It's one of the biggest rising writers right now. Um, he's he's taking on the role, one partnering up with me on that one. So that's going to be a, a fantastic comic book. 
the four images I sent you is from the Aliens Passage. That's Blowtorch and Pinpoint in their comic book. Oh, okay, okay. Aliens Passage, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's the one that's coming up. That's uh, going to be in November's previews. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm just sending those so you get an idea how they all how they all be next to each other, how they talk to each other. Yeah, that'd be amazing, um, man. Yeah. Um, you know, we just got some things coming up next year. You know, uh, we're gonna just expand on the. We got the crossover with the edge. I think I sent you that information. The crossover with a book called The Edge, uh, which is done by Marvin Wayne, which is also on Comicsburg Comics. Which this team is more like a, a X Men team or a team. It's a covert team, but it's a team with powers. Right. Awesome. So, are you involved with that? Yeah, we're, we're doing in the that? crossover with them. We're doing a crossover oh, called okay. Phantom with them, which should be leading to a new comic book called Phantoms, which is be another chess style comic book. Nice. Group man. style comic book. So yeah. um, we're trying to set that Amazing. up for twenty twenty four. And then um, just keep expanding on the characters. Like uh, I want to go, I want to go one by one, and do each character in in, in its own storyline. So we did pinpoint with with the end of with end of bad roads. We, we, I did blowtorch. Next one we're going to jump into footpath. Next one after that, I want to do one with infrared, which I have the idea in my head, but executing it is a little a little harder than I thought. No, because um, uh, no, he's all. I don't know if you watch Star Trek. I'm a Trekkie too. Yeah, me I, too. Yeah. I like data. I like yeah. data. So infrared is supposed to be a more like a a data style conversation character. You know what I mean? So, uh, how to film in his own comic book? It's like you know, it's it's a, a little tricky. Yeah. You no, know, so. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Data. It is interesting, but as a main as a, a main care or you know a, a lead character, I'm not. It'd be difficult. To pull yeah, as a robotic character, being that is a robot in, in, in his own book, like you know, he doesn't have emotions, he doesn't have back ties or family ties or things like that to make a story. Right. I, I know the story I want to do with him, but it's 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 taking me longer to break it up the way I want to. I try to write each one a, a little different. With chess is with chess is it's about the the whole team, so it's not, you know you're not right. focusing on one character. It's about the uh, heart and how she how she controls the team and on a mission, you know. So, right. Although you know, I will say this: that knowing that pinpoint uh, is based off a real person, somebody that you know like intimately, that adds a whole other uh, yeah. angle to his character that I didn't yeah. have before. So, but so we want to thank you for really. sharing that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, all the characters yeah. are based and, on and, stuff and, like that. And heart. And heart when you read chess. And heart. Heart is based off my heart. So. Right, right. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heart is yeah, yeah. based off your own. Yeah, so, you know, so that, that that's the lineup. Uh, I think I was the roughest. And heart I, my aunt. Infrared's off data from Star Trek. Uh, Airborne, his personality is like Murdoch, if you know the, the movie The A-Team. And, you know, of course, you talk about Blue Swatch and Pinpoint and, uh, Row and rowing, it's, it's just uh, her background is she kind of like she's aggressive, she's aggressive, she's taking martial arts when she's young, but she's a rich girl that that didn't that that still kind of like resonates with her father. So, you know, you, you get these relationships, you know, that husband didn't develop yet, I didn't write her comic, comic book yet. When you get these relationships and you, then you read the con, then you read chess and you get uh, an idea of all these personalities and, and it changes the way you read the comic book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. you go back, you, you go back and read it, and you have this more personal connection more with personal someone you already like, know. Yeah, I didn't. You like I didn't catch that before. I didn't catch this before. You know, you see in, in chess, you see how pinpoint's personality is right away because he's in the bar, and a hot guy like I'm looking for you, or whatever, and you know, you gotta push him around or something a little bit. So I'm head in the water barrel, and get on going. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were comparing it to uh, uh, '90s style uh, movies and stuff like, specifically um, Sylvester Stallone. 
like in that bar scene where he puts that uh, shit out in the oh yeah, puts the cigar. Yeah, like when uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, something that that shows his he deserved that shit. Yeah, yeah. You want me to put my cigar out, and and there's a guy smoking next to him, and he he lost the guy. Mean mugging yeah. him the whole time, you know. I mean, yeah, that's he definitely deserved that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's those points that you know you want to add that you know it's just this makes the character fun. In the way yeah. that you know he has the same aggression as some people who compare him to a Deadpool or Wolverine, but his is different. You know what I mean? So you know, it's yeah. like he's still reading a different I character. I didn't get a uh, I didn't get a Deadpool or Wolverine out of him. He seemed original yeah, yeah. to me. I didn't really get a certain feel from like christian said what'd you say a dead shot yeah like he kind of reminded me of dead shot uh just yeah, i didn't about, really you know, get any uh certain feel about any other character from him. he seemed pretty original to me like that uh, just this uh yeah. he seemed like this just just regular 90s okay. style uh takes no bullshit from not even a bunch of fucking kids he'll uh man, i thought he, <laughs> dude, i thought he killed that kid man he was laying there with his eyes all rolled back i'm like I'm like, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, I like these kids. They grab them and say, you know, you still want me to kill You know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, today's market has so much of everything. As long as the, the story, as long as the, the, the artwork, to me, this uh, relates to the story that you're doing. So, what I'm trying to say about that is, you know, if it's, if it's, I don't know what genre your story is in, but if it's scary, try and make the colors in the scheme scary. If it's kids, <clears throat> the kids, you know, you use the rounder figures and round the eyes and stuff like that. Kid, kid friendly. If it's action, use realistic elements like guns and stuff like that. That's out there. So you know, the, the no matter the art style, you know, the art style is, you know, the palette of the art style is is is, is to what you're trying to describe in the artwork. You know what I mean? So uh, as long as it's something that you would read, if you walked in the store, comic book store, which is the number one rule, if you walked into a comic book store and you saw your comic, would you buy it? I heard the review y'all did today, and um, I was like, that that, that could have been me. <laughs> <There's something. laughs> you're talking about so Suspira, Suspira. whatever it was. Yeah, Suspira. Oh, yeah, yeah, Suspira yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you know, that could have been me. They could have said they could have said that about blowtorch and, and ruined my whole ego. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, you had to worry about that, man. We, we, we're oh, we're yeah, looking yeah. forward to reading uh, the next upcoming blowtorches. The team with uh, blowtorch and pinpoint. Uh, I'm looking forward to that too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if Absolutely. you get a chance, check out check out Marvin Wayne's The Edge. I mean, really, that's yeah. the stores too. That's the, if you get a chance to, so you. When that crossover comes up, you're familiar with both teams. So you you know chess. I, I send you chess PDF um, issue two, and you and you get to know the edge. And that way, when you read the co- crossover, you're related to it. And you're like, hey, you know, it's like reading Wildcats and X Men meeting together, or something like that. You know, so yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And uh, yes, I know you asked this question before in, in your interview. Yes, uh, Ghost Touch Part Two is still the same artist. So yes, it's oh, still nice. Eagle. Yeah, yeah, good, Sweet. Good. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Man. We're, keep we're Igor new around, fans man. of Igor, man. Yeah, we're good, big yeah. fans of Igor. Yeah, yeah, and and I gotta tell you, just just off the first page alone of of, of issue two, you you gonna, you, gonna get, you gonna get the same feel. Very nice. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, and if you, get, if you get a chance to talk to Igor, let him know he's got two fans here, man. Like he's doing a phenomenal yeah, two job. Big fans, yeah, man. Yeah. Big fans. I got lucky in meeting Sade Timofanti, Timofanto. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. When I did, you know, I was so big into lettering. You know, chess is lettered by Troy Pateri, which which was was an image letterer on uh, all all the all the cyber cyber force comic books. Okay. And I wanted that okay. look, and um, I met Sade Timofanti in uh in in a in a at a con. And she just walk around to, and uh, she she's a letter of a cat woman. Oh, nice! And cool. I said, I said, hey, I mean, she she's a letter for all, a lot of DC books, you know, all, all the DC books rather, not just Catwoman, but Batman, all the DC books. And I said, you know, she's looking at my lettering. She said, who did this lettering? 
I said, Troy but Terry. She's like, mm, I don't like the way he did this one. I said, well, what, what would you do different to it? She said, I would do this expression, this one. And then, you know, uh, from that day, she became part of the team. And oh, her, very cool. her lettering really increases the comic book. Her, her, her effects really increases the comic book. She really knows how to make a comic book flow. You know what I mean? So uh, I would say all aspects of your comic book counts. Yes, absolutely. The letterer, yeah. the artwork. And, and I would say if you read a comic book and don't realize you're reading it, that's a good comic book. Right, right. That's a, for, for most average readers, if, the, if nothing stands out, you've done a good job. You know saying? So if, you're, out, like, if you your lettering stands out, you know you fucked up. If this stands yeah. out, you know you fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you read, even, even I know y'all. I know y'all, y'all said um, you like both sides better than pinpoint and chess. But even in reading it, if, if if you can read it, and from front page to back page, and then not realize that you, you got to the end of the comic book, that that I feel like that's a solid comic book. It might be things in there, you know, artwork or whatever, but you don't realize it as you're reading it because the the flow is like kind of kind of moving. So. Yeah, I would say that, that that's one of the most important parts. I think a lot of people miss that part of a comic book when it comes to lettering. Yeah, lettering yeah, not we stand out. yeah, we don't talk much about the lettering. We do a little bit sometimes. I think we have a couple of times, but not much. Uh, uh, the lettering, yeah. yeah, you're right. Most people don't um, speak much about letters, man. You're right. They don't get enough credit. Yeah, yeah. we might change that. Yeah, we lettering, should. Lettering is so important to a comic book because if 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 anything breaks between the first page and the last page while you're reading it, it's usually because of the lettering throws you off. You know what I mean? So, and right. then now you pause. Now you pause. Now you can recognize everything you don't like about the comic book. Now you don't lost your interest. You know what I mean? So the lettering, the if the flow gets you from the front page to the last page, that you can reread it over and over and over. You know what I mean? So that that's the point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I got I got lucky adding her to the team. Because yeah, you get, did, uh, blowtorch the first issue. I was like, oh my god, you know what I mean? She just changes the structure of the of, of the page with her lettering. So yeah, you got you definitely have a dream team with blowtorch, man. Yeah, yeah, for real, man, for real. <coughs> yeah. oh, speaking no, of which, uh, when is um, uh, blowtorch uh, Bad Roads coming out? Uh, it should be November previews as well. Blowtorch Bad Roads two and and the Aliens Passage. To be able and, uh, in the next previews. And where can uh, where can readers uh, go to buy these? In comic book stores, off the previews, and it gets listed. Yeah. Oh, oh those okay. Are okay. Cool. So will they be available like online too? Like if they go like on Amazon or? I I haven't I haven't done an online store for them yet, um, but that is in the works. You know, page one comics is still brand new, and I'm still. <sighs> On the website and all that stuff. Everything was was second sight at first. So you're just strictly on everything. shelves right now. I'm so strictly just... on shelves. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. 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 Yeah. Very cool. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't do a Kickstarter. I did. I, I did do a Kickstarter for the crossover or um a Zoop campaign, and that we just finished the last page on that. So now with, with the letters and stuff for that, and then uh, once we fulfill that campaign. We either put it online or put it back, or put that one in previews as well. Amazing, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, great, great. Um, Simon, those are all of my questions. Bob, you got anything else to add? Uh, no, I mean, other than this has been a, a fantastic uh, interview, man. I've been, and like, I yeah, probably just stared at the camera like this zombie just <laughs> in, <you> know, <laughs> listening to everything he's saying because I'm taking it all in, man. It's uh, amazing. I'm so glad that you. Uh, asked us to review the comic. It was an amazing comic, and then graced us here on our our tiny little show uh, with an interview. Man, it was uh, very uh, gracious of you, and we really, really appreciate it, man. It was amazing. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, yeah, I mean, this has been a whole lot of fun. Bob and I were so excited to do this show. You have no idea. <laughs> and uh, I, I truly appreciate the um, the feedback I gave on Blowtorch chess and pinpoint and the fact that you know um you like the comic books enough to to take the interest in it um uh, so yeah alfred uh thank you again so much for your time man we really do appreciate uh 
all, all the insight that you've given us, not only on the comics, but also like on the industry and, and your background. Um, so let us know what you guys think in the comments. And if you have any questions for Alfred, Alfred, is there any way that people can check out your uh, other work? I am on Project Chess, Project Chess on Facebook. And then um, go there and see all the upcoming information, everything that's there. Project Chess, that's the way it is on the comic book. C dot H dot E dot S dot S. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You guys go check that out. You let Alfred know what uh what you think. Let us know what you think in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe. And uh till next time, guys. Uh thanks, man. Awesome. Dude, he tore you a I new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just murdered me on my own show. I fucking love that shit. <laughs>